Hello everyone and welcome back to Webtoon Rant. Today we got an action webtoon called Limit Breaker. And today I will explain the general premise and setting of the webtoon, the main character, the main conflict, the plot, and my general rating of the webtoon. Let's get right into it. So Limit Breaker is about there being a monster outbreak in the world. Essentially, gates have opened throughout Earth and monsters are invading our planet. And in this kind of typical and cliched premise, usually there is that other factor, the counterforce to the monsters, hunters, or humans who are suddenly gifted with extraordinary powers to defend humanity against these monsters and these gates that are opening everywhere. And in this webtoon, what happens when you initially become a hunter is that you're stuck within a tutorial dimension for an hour or two to get a hang of the basic controls of becoming a hunter, then are blurted right back in the real world. And since there's a some kind of time displacement effect, when you're in the tutorial world, uh, two to three hours feel like is like a second in the actual world. So you're in there for two to three hours and you're back in the real world and you haven't even left for a single second and you have to start fighting all these monsters. And there's this kind of it's, it's kind of funny, actually, because you are given some kind of guideline, right, to become a hunter and to learn how to use your abilities. Now, the main character, Gibon Kim, is kind of a special character. In the sense that because of a glitch in the system, he was stuck in the tutorial dimension for 3,000 years. Yes, you heard me right, 3,000 years. And he nearly went insane doing it. He had to kill the same monster in the tutorial dimension once, two times, three times, thousands of times, millions of times, a gazillion times, uncountable number of times for 3,000 years. And he nearly went insane. And after that 3,000 years, finally the glitch is gone and he finally returns to a real world. Now 10 freaking years has passed. And to say the least, he now cares about nothing except his family, because that's the only thing that had kept, me, kept him sane in the 3,000 years. So his family includes his mother and his sister, his little sister. So to say that this character doesn't give a shit about literally anything is an understatement. 3,000 years in there, yeah, you start to care a little less about what other people think of you and what other people think about your actions. So he comes back into the world, does not give a shit, and runs around to look for his parents. And he does find his mother, and he goes to her. However, unfortunately, a dungeon outbreak occurs right at that moment, injuring his mother and putting her on life support. And the stuff that can cure her is very, very, very rare. So Gibong Kim decides to use his power for the good, fighting off these monsters and making a deal with the government. Since hunters, ever since the decade has passed since they first appeared, has become a corrupt force within the country and the world, who believe that they can do anything and break laws and still be okay since they are the defenders of humanity, hunters have long forgotten their honor and their original purpose, to fight monsters and protect the planet and the common people. So he makes a deal with the government, hey, I'll be THE hunter, the guy that's protecting everyone and doing good things and not caring about power or, you know, killing people and being corrupt. In turn, you guys need to heal my mom. And they take the deal because he's immensely powerful and he can he's pretty much one punch man. He can one punch pretty much any monster unless it's like the highest of the highest of the highest level. So now this OP one punch man style character goes on a journey to fight monsters and fight off dungeon outbreaks and help people and become a hero that he is meant to be. And when, while, while on this journey, a crew of amazing individuals follow him and he cr creates this nice little group of people of this one girl who is a streamer and a magic user who is in here, this girl and a, a Chinese person who can use sub-dimensions, a Kumiho, and several other interesting characters all come together under his wing to fight against evil. And as the plot thickens, we find out the secret behind the monsters that are being summoned into these worlds, and slowly but surely we get to see Gibong fight off monsters and heal his mother and accomplish his original goal of saving people, and of course saving his family. That is the premise of the story. Now, 
a uh, couple stuff. The author is the best monster drawer I've ever seen. It's very creepy and very cool. I think I, I did show you a little sneak peek while showing you, you know, the magician. But look at this. Look at that. What is that? I mean, it's so creepy. And like, everything about this is just like, very detailed and super, super gross. And like, the same thing with this thing. I mean, it looks so cool, but so creepy. Same thing with this thing, whatever this thing is, holy. I mean, these aren't even the best one, ladies and gentlemen. The best ones are the level 7, threat level 7 star, 8 stars that are freaking amazing. And I'm not going to show you those for the sake of spoilers and for you to, you yourselves to be surprised when you actually read the webtoon. So yeah, these got the, they've got amazing monsters and the fight scenes are pretty awesome. Like, it's really well coordinated, and the magic is really cool, the effects are very cool, and yeah, look at this, I mean, it's very cool. And obviously this is a side character, so her magic is not as, she's not as powerful as the main character, because the main character is quite literally one punch man. However, the fight scenes are always very, very cool. Yeah, and that's about it. So again, the fight scenes are very, very cool, it's very satisfying, the main character pretty much obliterates everyone, and he's a very warm-hearted character, there's a lot of power struggle involved, there's a lot of corruption involved, there's a lot of justice being dealt, and it's quite satisfying. So season 1 of the series was very, very cool, it was very well paced. Season 2 was is also alright, but it plays a lot on nostalgia of Season 1, and however the pacing so far is a little bit slow, so take that into account. I'll give this a solid C tier. It has good action scenes, it has decent plot, however it is very cliched and very typical, So and there are no like deeper themes other than, you know, I care about family, which in itself isn't gone through very deeply either, so that is my rating. I would recommend this webtoon on the condition that you are very, very bored, and it is quite satisfying, even though objectively it is still a C tier. Thank you everyone for watching, see you in another webtoon rant. Have a great day everyone.